Let's take a look at this interesting question, MJ18P41. Ah, it's a vertical oscillation. But you see the sand and the plate? They can lose contact. Anyway, some sand is sprinkled on the plate, the variation and assertion of the sand is shown in the figure below. So the sand will be oscillating up and down. Now before we actually go into the the uh, the question, I want you to think about this. What are the forces acting on the sand? I mean, it's, it's, it's an oscillation, simple harmonic motion. So you will need to have a restoring force, right? What acts on the sand particle? So if I zoom in on a sand particle, the sand particle will have a weight. So that is acting downwards. And is this constant all the way? Yes, it is constant all the way. But what is changing though is the, the normal contact force. Kind of like draw upwards. And this one will change depending on where the plate is. If the plate is down there, the plate is up there, okay. This is an important thing that will help you later in the question. So these two forces together will form the restoring force, the net force of these two forces. Okay, so keep that in mind. There are two forces again in the plate. One is constant, one changes. Okay, let's take a look at the question. Here we have a very nice acceleration displacement graph. And the first question they ask us is, show how it can be deduced that the sand is undergoing simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion means, well, the equa general equation is, sorry, not okay, negative half omega square x. What this means is you need to prove that this graph up here is a straight line. You know, based on the equation, y equals to mx plus c, okay, straight line. And also, you need to show that this negative is there. What is the negative? Negative is in the gradient. Okay, so how do we do that? You want to mention that acceleration is proportional to displacement. How do we know it's proportional? You need to describe. Don't just say acceleration is proportional to displacement. That is defining simple harmonic motion. But we want to show... Based on the graph, use figure 2.2. So you can say the graph is a straight line through the origin. So that tells you that it is a y equals mx. Huh? So the graph is a straight line through origin. That means what? Acceleration is proportional to the displacement. Now, I write a shortcut because you write out the whole sentence. Lah, okay? Acceleration is, is proportional to displacement because it is a straight line. Okay, how do we get the marks here? Now, they're very specific. If you just say acceleration proportional to displacement, you won't get a mark. You want to say straight line through origin. That will support your A proportional to Y and you'll get your B1 mark. That's the first point. The second point is... Simple harmonic motion has two definition, two parts to the definition. One is straight line through origin, A proportional to Y. But you also mentioned what is the negative sign there? Look at this. This graph is going down with a negative gradient. Okay, so negative gradient means you must say that... Uh, what does that mean? So negative gradient over there means that acceleration is... Got to mention the direction is opposite to the displacement. So A and X, opposite direction, that's why there is a negative sign there. Ah, so this is how you want to mention out all the points here. Talk about the sign, talk about the proportionality. So I just draw this fish symbol proportionality. Okay, so that's how you can tell if the graph is simple harmonic or not. Now we come into some calculations. Calculate the frequency of oscillation of the sand. So the sand's going up and down, point, point, point. And we got to use our graph here to help us out. So stay calm. We just write out, we start off with this equation for simple harmonic motion, the general equation. A equals negative omega square x. But since they use y as displacement, I'm just going to use y as well. Okay, now, how do we know what the acceleration is? Can we read from the graph? Can we pick any point? I guess we can. Just pick here. Okay. Mm, we want to find angular frequency, right? Okay, so we will simp we will expand this part a little bit. So 
So angular frequency is 2 pi f. Ah, f is what we're looking for. So now we have to choose a point on the graph. I don't know, you can choose any point you want, I guess. <laughs> Let's see, what shall we choose here? So, let me see. How about I pick... What shall I pick? I can't really see my graph clearly. How about negative 3.4? which is somewhere here. By the way, I should mention as well, if this is your straight line graph, then your gradient uh, is what? Uh? If this is a straight line graph, what is the gradient? Gradient, which is this whole thing, should equal to this whole thing. Okay, so the point of picking points on the graph is so that I can, I can do in the next step that gradient is negative omega square, which is also negative 2 pi f square. So I need to pick points. So what points do we pick? Usually it's good to choose ones that are in a corner. So for example, I think this one looks good. Crosses a corner nicely. I need to pick another point. I guess I could pick 0. Okay, 0 is a good point. So from there to zero, you cannot do it like paper tree once upon a time. So this is six millimeters, negative three point four millimeters. And then you find the gradient of the graph. Okay, so the middle origin here is zero zero, yeah. Now let us calculate. So gradient of the graph is our negative omega square. Very nice. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is the gradient. What is the value? So we have negative 3.4 minus the origin. And from my point that I picked, 6 millimeters minus 0 millimeters. And these are in millimeters, so I convert to meters. Okay, and that will be equal to negative 2 pi f squared. Wow, look at all that math. Okay, let's rearrange a little bit. So you want to rearrange and do some calculations so that you have F. I'm just going to do it on my calculator, straight off. So then you should get a value of 3.788 hertz. Final answer, you can write it to 2 or 3 SF, it's fine. I'll do 2 for now, so 3.8 hertz. The first mark comes from if you know what the equation is for simple harmonic motion and how you sub in omega. What is omega? Then your final answer, A1. Okay? So remember, uh, gradient is your negative omega square. Next, the amplitude of oscillation of the plate <coughs> gradually increased beyond 8 mm. The frequency is constant. Okay. At one amplitude, the sand lose contact with the plate. Lose contact here means what? Uh? Means if you have this sand, they are they look like they're touching, but they're not touching. How do we know? We, we can say this, that the normal force is zero. Once normal force is zero, means it's not touching any lah. So for the plate, when the sand first loses contact with the plate, means normal force is zero, state the position of the plate. When does that happen? If you're not sure, grab, a, grab your phone or something, put it on your hand, and you make your hand oscillate up and down. You will notice that at some point, if you oscillate big enough, the calculator will actually lose contact with your hand. It's like floating. And this is what is happening here. When you increase the amplitude beyond 8, it's actually off the graph, right? Yeah, we only have 8, but we're going further than 8, so we don't know. So, where does that happen? Ah, you need to imagine you're going up at the highest point. That is where you lose contact with the plate. So, you can say position of maximum displacement maximum displacement above or below equilibrium hmm. you want to say above equilibrium or upwards so i'll just write out the whole thing here next part calculate the amplitude of oscillation and what is this for when the sand lose contact with the plate so when it lose contact what is the amplitude of oscillation oh my my this is quite an interesting question but let me show you an uh, animation here first about this exact problem. When you have normal contact force and weight, ignore these graphs on the right. Just focus on this thing here. 
Now, when you are at equilibrium position, there is no net force, hence no acceleration. That means your weight is equal to the normal contact force acting on the box. We're looking at the box or the sand particle, whatever you call it. Okay, But if I play, pay close attention to see what happens to these arrows here. Weight is just constant, it's not changing. But what is changing though is this normal contact force acting on the plate. You will notice at one point, the normal contact force disappears. The uh, green arrow just shrinks. That is the moment where the box loses contact, just loses contact with the plate. Okay, so keep this in mind, all right? It's quite an interesting idea. Like the graphs, yeah, I can go and understand it more to see how it changes. But anyway, so that is how we can think of this sand particle, box losing contact and things like that. So what is the amplitude of the oscillation? Well, let's go back to our good old acceleration equals to negative omega square x. Or omega square y, I believe. Okay, y la. What is the acceleration though? We're trying to find y. What is the amplitude? So, add, uh, at y naught, which is the amplitude, maximum amplitude. Sorry, maximum displacement upwards. What is the acceleration? We actually cannot read this from the graph. Okay, so we need to think about this. Let me draw some boxes for you. These are the sand on the plate. Sand on the plate. Plate on the sand. Okay, this is equilibrium position. So here, your weight of the sand is exactly the same value of the normal force acting on the sand. So net force is zero. So what is acceleration? Acceleration is zero. Now, if you go below, that's when the sand is pressing hard into the box or into the plate. So although weight is the same value, there is a very, 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 very big normal force. And this causes a net restoring force that will try to push these uh, sand particles back. Now, if you go to the position that we're currently at, so up here, the sand just about lost contact with the plate. All that's acting on it is just weight. So you will have a net force, which is weight, acting downwards. And what is the acceleration due to weight or due to gravitational pull? Well, we know this as 9.81 meters per second or just good old G. So when you just lose contact, only weight acting on the sand particle. When it's only weight, it means your acceleration is 9.81 G. So this is 9.81 equals to, I guess we ignore the negative sign. We only want the absolute value, right? Okay, sure. So omega square is what we have calculated previously, a 3.8. So 2 pi times 3.8 square times the amplitude, maximum amplitude when you are up there. So let me draw some stuff. Here to here is our maximum amplitude upwards. Now we can find the value of y0, which should be in meters, 0 0.0172 meters. But hey, be careful. Huh? The final answer wants it in millimeters, so you got to convert it. 1, 2, 3, so 17.2 millimeters. And you can write 17 millimeters. Three marks for this idea. First mark comes from you knowing that the acceleration is 9.81. Did you know that? Okay, second mark comes from you plugging in all the correct values to the equation. And the final mark comes from the final answer for accuracy. Okay, hope that was helpful in understanding how these sand particles work. This applies for all kinds of vertical oscillations where the object is resting on the oscillating plate. Okay, so sometimes you will lose contact and the object will fly up. That is how you can think of oscillations vertically with the normal contact force.